Uh, hi everyone, I'm uh, Nikos Marianopoulos. Uh, I'm, uh, I work at Red Hat and I'm going to present uh, the Fedora system wide crypto policies. And uh, it's a bit of cacophony actually to see Red Hat in a conference of OpenSUSE. But uh, the point of this talk is to invite uh, for collaboration and uh, see what, where we can work together. Uh, actually, I cannot see you, so if you want to make uh, any comments or make any questions during the presentation, just uh, make sure you are, you are visible because of the light. So what I'm going to present is I'm going to give you the purpose, why we didn't, do we need the system-wide crypto policies, uh, the benefits that we see to them, what is the current status as we have it in Fedora, uh, what is the approach we followed, uh, some lessons learned, uh, and uh, our future plans. So, who, who is me? Uh, I work at Reha Security Technologies, as I mentioned before, uh, mostly on crypto-related projects. Uh, my favorite projects is uh, GNU TLS and the Open Connect VPN, and I also contribute to OpenWRT. Uh, and I started the system-wide crypto policies effort uh, in Fedora. So, let's move on to the purpose. Why do we need it? Uh, as an administrator, typically, uh, you don't maintain one system. You maintain probably a chaos, ca chaotic situation like this. Uh, you have multiple systems, multiple users. Uh, so some of the systems are servers, some of the systems are clients. And uh, if we focus on a single system, let's say we take a server, what the server is doing most of the time, it's communicating uh, over the LAN or over the internet with other systems. And if we want to be precise, it's communicating with using CURL, WGET, uh, Firefox, Apache, SSH, OpenVPN, or any, or hundreds of uh, programs that you may find in a Linux uh, distribution like Fedora or OpenSUSE. And the, the question now is, how, how secure is uh, its channel established by this server? If someone connects to the server over Apache, how secure is this uh, question? What, what is the level, uh, the security level established? If someone here is an administrator, most likely you say either I don't know or I know for this particular service, but I don't know about anything else. Uh, so the next question is, how can we ensure a consistent security level across the system or across the systems we administer? And this is the problem that uh, system-wide crypto policy solve. Uh, we apply a consistent default uh, security policy across uh, all applications in the system and in all the libraries in the system. I would like to make a note here that we would like this policy to be modified by the distributor and the user of the applications rather than uh, the author of the software because typically in distribution we have uh, software packet uh, dis not distributed but uh, it's taken from multiple sources, multiple authors with different views on security with different uh, approaches. So. You have one application that has, let's say, AS256 by default uh, used, and the, it doesn't go lower. And you have another software that uses RC4, and uh, you cannot change it. So that's why we would like the security level to be set by the distributor who wants to set some con uh, consistent level on the system. So, how is the problem tackled today? What uh, do administrators do? If, if you are an administrator, maybe you have uh, already a solution. Uh, but the best one I could find was that an administrator goes to a website like bettercrypto.org, uh, he downloads a PDF that tells you how to harden each of your servers or your client applications. So you go through this document, it's 100 pages, and you go, let's say, for the OpenVPN, you go to the section for OpenVPN, for Apache, you go to the se section for Apache, 
you copy these settings to your configuration files, and then you supposedly you uh, put a, a regional security level for today to your servers. What happens two years late, later is that these settings that you copied there are already outdated. Uh, probably some attack uh, was invented, some new attack, so the old algorithms are already deprecated. So if you set up a server in 2010, and uh, today, most likely, you need to disable half of the algorithms that existed there. Like RC4, you have to disable SSL 3.0. So th that is why we would like to improve this process. And what are the benefits we see? If we improve this process, we reduce, first of all, the administrative burden. An administrator wouldn't have to go through these documents and uh, modify each and every service on a system. And we also reduce support costs uh, in a sense that uh, several vulnerabilities will be already tackled system-wide. Uh, here I have an example of logjam uh, because it was an attack that happened when we already knew that 1024-bit uh, Diffie-Hellman was the minimum we could use. However, some applications had lo much lower than that. So if we could, if we had a uh, uh, consistent security policy of the system, when logjam happened, we wouldn't have the problem. And of course, easier audit, because if you hire an auditor to go through your system and tell you whether everything is uh, okay in respect to, to cryptography, he wouldn't have to go through the programs that, go, that follow the policy. He would just check the programs that don't follow the policy that uh, ideally there shouldn't be any. So let, let me, this was pretty much the theory of it. Let me go to the current status. What do we have in Fedora? We did a first pilot version in Fedora 21. It was simply a common policy for GNU TLS and OpenSSL applications. So it was mainly a common policy for the libraries. And we selected to have only three policies to choose from. Uh, one called Legacy, that had every broken algorithm you could think of, uh, like MD5 and everything, uh, default, which is, we. We define it to be a reasonable for today's security level, where today's is when Fedora is released. And future uh, was a security level that uh, we define it as the, the algorithms that we expect it to be broken in the near future are removed, like uh, SA1, for example. The, the interesting part is that if you use future, most likely you cannot connect anywhere in the internet. Uh, we, in the next uh, uh, version of Fedora, in 22, we converted several libraries and applications to adhere to this policy, including Apache, LightSPD, all the servers we had, uh, most of the command line applications like wget and LSTP. In the next version of Fedora, in 23, we added also Bint, so the crypto policies will generate a policy for uh, the Bint application, and for Kerberos clients as well in Fedora 24. That was released a uh, few days ago. And uh, in Fedora 25, we plan to add uh, all Java, a consistent policy also for Java and NSS applications. NSS is the library used by Firefox and uh, uh, also Chromium, I believe. And uh, we, we try to not in involve upstream uh, uh, or to involve upstream as little as possible, but uh, we couldn't avoid it actually. So we required some upstream patches for GNU TLS. It's already upstream since 3.0, that's a few years ago. In OpenSSL, we opened some pull requests in GitHub and we discussed it with uh, the developers, but the discussion is still ongoing, unfortunately, after two years. Uh, and for NSS, it's already upstream, uh, the patches that we needed to adhere to the policies. And uh, the way upstream selected was to go through setting policies via a file called pks11.txt. So let me go to what was the approach that we selected. And let me first say about OpenSSL and Nutilas that were the first programs that we used. Uh, if you have used uh, OpenSSL application, most likely you know this cipher suite string that is, uh, you said something like hi, not MD5, and uh, 
something like this. If you have set up Apache, most likely you already put string like that uh, in the configuration file. In GNU-TLS, it's something similar. It has another configuration string for cipher switch. So we selected, since both have a configuration string, why not set a, def a configuration string that is default for the system? So we decided to have a configuration string for, a for OpenSSL, for example, that is profile equal system, and add system for GNU-TLS, so that when you specify these specific keywords, uh, the system-wide policy will be used for the application. That way, uh, the administrator can also override the system-wide policy if he needs to. And we can also set it by default in configuration files without uh, breaking most existing user cases. Then, of course, the hard work was to modify all the programs we were shipping uh, with the default configuration files to contain these specific strings. This is still an ongoing effort. We have converted most of the programs, but not everything yet. And of course, there are applications which don't have configuration files, and these were also one of the main targets of the policy, because if you don't have a configuration file, I mean, no one knows what you're using. So when an application didn't have a configuration file, it was simply modified it to use the default uh, system policy. Uh, you can see our rules uh, on this URL. Uh, I hope I will be able to put online this presentation after the talk. And these are our packaging rules for uh, adhering to the policy for applications in Fedora. And another addition we did was to, we wanted to warn the packagers uh, when a program was overriding the default settings of OpenSSL or GNU-TLS. Something I didn't mention that uh, if an application is using the default uh, settings of OpenSSL or GNU-TLS, uh, we made it them automatically to use the system-wide defaults rather than uh, OpenSSL or GNU-TLS defaults. So if an application was overriding these defaults, we modified RPM link to warn the packager that uh, this application modifies the default. Uh, you have to take some action, either make it uh, adhere to the default system-wide policies if it is hard-coded, if it has a policy hard-coded, or modify the configuration file if needed. For applications which had configuration files like Bint, uh, the name server, or Kerberos applications, uh, we simply generate a configuration file with a, a pol with a policy that uh, complies with the bin, uh, let's say, format. And then we modified bin to simply include the configuration files uh, emitted by the policy application. For, uh, uh, this is simply an example. Uh, the policy generate uh, configuration uh, for uh, Kerberos. This is for Kerberos. It just says that the, the ticket uh, is allowed to be encrypted with AS-256 and AS-128. And then uh, this file is linked from the Kerberos configuration directory. And we also allowed uh, the administrator to opt out by simply deleting that link because if, for example, the administrator wants to override this policy, uh, it's easier if he opt out rather than uh, reducing the whole system policy in order to comply with his local requirements. And what we wanted to cover ideally was everything related to cryptography, from signature algorithms, MAC algorithms, uh, cipher algorithms, key exchange algorithms, elliptic curves, uh, size of parameters, protocols, whatever is you see there. We haven't quite managed for uh, GNU-TLS and NSS, we managed to cover everything for OpenSSL because of the default uh, cipher suite string of OpenSSL is restric restricted to setting only this subset. Uh, we couldn't cover all everything on the policy. So we rely on the packager to, to restrict to the acceptable uh, default policy by default on, for everything else. This is not ideal, uh, but uh, it, 
uh, at least for now, upstream uh, OpenSSL developers are, are not uh, interested in extending their Safir suite string. So for now, we are restricted on that aspect. So I will move on with the uh, section I call lessons learned. It's pretty much trivia out of the development uh, of the crypto policies. Uh, what we realized is that we require a smooth transition. If you have uh, system-wide policies, you cannot simply disable an algorithm and uh, expect to release. Uh, we tested it, and uh, in what later became Fedora 22, we disabled SSL 3.0. And uh, by the time I did it and I committed, uh, 10, 10 minutes later, I had already a bug uh, reported that some application broke. However, with sufficient planning, we could make it work. Uh, we, I, I don't know how is your process in OpenSUSE. In Fedora, we have a process of uh, announcing a change and then uh, waiting six months until the next release and doing that change. So we followed this process for to disable RC4 and SSL 3.0, and we were pretty sufficient. In Fedora 23, we managed to remove it from most of the system. So, something also that relates to, to the policies and uh, also to the upstreams uh, that we collaborated with, uh, there is some uh, upstream uh, reluctance usually to for si something system-wide. Some uh, upstream developers from OpenSSL, they said uh, each application should be free, for example, to set their own settings. But uh, if you are a distributor of software uh, in in really large bunches like a uh, distribution of Fedora or OpenSUSE, you really have uh, thousands of pieces of software. You don't want each application to be that free because you have no idea what you're shipping. And this was uh, something we actually failed them to convince, and this is why OpenSSL still has a limited support for crypto policies. Um, and another and another aspect is that changes for proactive security that uh, don't actually solve a problem that uh, pe all people see at this moment are pretty slow to adopt. Uh, with NSS, it also took uh, more than a year to include the policies. And uh, unlike uh, if you have a CV, you are going to solve it in a matter of days. But uh, if you have something that will improve CVs of the future, you have no time pressure, actually, and most likely we see the progress is low. However, uh, we also see that it pays off. Uh, the fix for Poodle, which was simply disabling SSL 3.0, would have been a, a fix in a single policy, in a single piece of the distribution, rather than having to fix all the applications we ship in, uh, in Fedora. The same for the uh, new issues were, that were found in RC4 or in, or in CBC ciphers, the same compression. As I mentioned, the logjam attack wouldn't have been uh, a news, uh, wouldn't have been at the news at all. So what do we plan to do in the future? Uh, we also plan to include open SSH. This is of lower priority to us because OpenSSH is one of the applications that the upstream developers are pretty active and they're very, I mean, their defaults are pretty sensible. We don't have much problem with them, but we think it would be a good idea to add them to policy anyway. And uh, we have a tracker where you can see which, uh, on which stage we are for each uh, transition of the applications we plan to include. Uh, we also want to auto-generate the, the policy because in the beginning when we started it was simply open SSL, GNU TLS, we just added NSS later. But uh, now we are generating policies for eight applications pretty much. So we cannot rely on someone hand coding uh, the policy for each application. So we, we are pretty much uh, at the end, uh, we need to rewrite it and uh, we are already, I am already, I have a, a rewrite pending. And one request that was made to us a, few ye a year ago, actually, was uh, to generate the policy in a way that new applications can read and uh, 
uh, set and fo follow it uh, in a way that uh, the policy will not generate uh, a specific policy for that application, but the application will read the generic policy of the system and act. I, I'm not convinced that this will not cause more problems than will actually solve, but it's an idea we're actually considering uh, at the moment. So, the reason of this talk was actually to describe what we have in Fedora and uh, possibly uh, for, we can collaborate with the open source developers to bring it there as well. And uh, it's hosted at GitHub, the, uh, the tool that generates the policies at the moment. And you can see it uh, there. And that's the end of my talk. So if you have any questions, that's the time to make it. doesn't work. Ah, yeah. Um, is there a design uh, application specific override capability? Because as an example, some routing protocols uh, have requirements for something like MD5, but as a, as a policy, you want to prevent that, that, you know, all the other services are allowed to have to use that. Hash. The application specific overrides depend, uh, they depend mainly on the library or the backend that the application is using. For OpenSSL and NUTLS, for example, the application, uh, the application typically allows you to override the, the cipher suit string. So if you override it, you override the system-wide policy, so you use your specific, uh, uh, your specific policy that you want for this particular application. The problem comes to applications which don't allow you to override. For, for them, we don't do anything more uh, than, uh, than just making sure that it follows uh, the policy. Uh, for these applications, if an override is needed, it has to be done upstream with the application. I don't know if that answers your question. We can discuss it further if you want, later. And how did uh, other uh, Linux distributors react, or uh, how, uh, did you get your configuration policies um, into upstream? Uh, so so uh, I'm asking about the feedback uh, of your project. Uh, did you influence other developers, or? We, we have uh, the, the upstream parts that we wanted uh, are currently upstream in uh, GNU TLS and, uh, and uh, NSS. So these parts we already have upstream and uh, currently we're at talk with the OpenSSL developers to upstream some parts that we may require. Uh, other than that, we don't require any other upstream uh, uh, cooperation. We, we are doing it uh, we we only we can do it by only configuring downstream. So I guess that's all. Thank you very much.